Hi friends. Today we're reading, Where is the Frog? Without a moment's hesitation, Antoinette hops between the irises and vanishes deep beneath the water. Calm down, gargoyle groans a, groans a toad. There's no need to worry. The man only sketches flowers. He does not eat frog legs. Did someone say flowers? Antoinette slips from her hiding place and admires her reflection in the water. Reflection means it's like a mirror you can see yourself. In that case, I'm the perfect catch. Come and look. Seriously, I'm at least as pretty as a water lily. Just a little mint leaf in the water from the corner of her eye. She watches the old man standing among the poppies. Mr. Claude. A white beard and a bunch of brushes, an easel and a hat. The great flower hunter seems to be looking for something. Painter walks slowly back and forth in the garden, a daisy here, a dahlia there. He lightly touches the petals and glances up at the sky and adjusts the flowers. He stops at the foot of the little bridge and sets up his easel and his stool. Already? It's now or never, just as Mr. Claude pulls out his painting tubes and sets up his palette, hop, Antoinette leaps onto a water lily. The powder's the tip of her nose and then she's ready. Careful, don't move a muscle. But first her right leg starts to tickle and then her left and how can she pose without wriggling when it feels like she has springs beneath her feet? See if you can see Antoinette the frog. Let me see it when you see it, right in the middle of the painting. Right here. Good. Ouch! Antoinette is about to give up when, phew, the church bell rings and the painter leaves for lunch. Free at last, the poor little frog hobbles back to the bridge to admire her portrait in the finished sketch. But where is the frog? By Jove, what a fool I am. Green on green, of course you can't see a thing. Looking for herself in the picture. And she's right, you cannot see. Go find two things green and put them on top of each other and see if they blend in, see if it looks like the same thing. Then come back. The following day, the sun is high in the sky. By the time Mr. Claude comes down to the garden, he brings a basket to his studio boat. Antoinette leaps onto a nearby dinghy that's a small boat. Hop, hop. But where's the frog? Good gracious, these twigs need trimming. So there he's painting. And here the frog is in the boat, but look, he's hidden beneath the, the tree branches. Oh, poor frog. A few days later in the shade of an old willow tree, the white bearded man gazes at the water lilies. Antoinette perched on a branch sways and swings in the wind, but are those your little frog legs I see? Taunts a heron with an appetite. He wanted to eat them. If so, I could eat them in one gulp. All right, let's see if you can see the frog. There. After a fright like that, Antoinette is exhausted, so tired. Spotting a nest at the foot of the willow tree, she climbs in and falls right asleep. Hey. There's something funny in my hat, exclaims the surprised painter. How funny, I almost mistook it for a green water lily. And he picks up his brush. And when Antoinette wakes up, she cannot believe her eyes. There on the canvas, right in front, there she is at last. She's become the muse, the nymph, the queen of the flowery garden. <gasps> How beautiful she looks. I know what happens. Come close so I can kiss you, says Antoinette to the portrait facing her. She quickly jumps toward the canvas and, oh no, splash. 
everything tumbles into the water. The easel, the brushes, the frog, the pitcher. Antoinette was never seen again. And Mr. Claude really never got over it. The masterpiece has remained missing ever since. And that's it. They're gonna show you all the famous pictures. None of them have the frog in it. So silly. Beautiful, there's the water lilies. See if they show us any more. Oh, there's the dinghy that the frog was in, right? There we go. And that's it. We all said the.